Welcome one and all to another edition of the Defoe Show with Luby here on the 5 Reasons Sports Network. Brought to you by Water Cleanup of Florida. The rains keep on a coming and that can do damage to our homes or offices. But no worries, Water Cleanup of Florida is there to make sure whatever issues arise go away swiftly and look brand new. 954-579-0356 is the number to dial. Water Clean Up Florida, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. They are at your service. And I mean that because they were at my wife and my service for our townhouse. Did a fantastic job. Not only with the over 60 years of combined experience between Michael, Robert, George, their entire team, but the fact that they have licensed, certified, insured contractors on staff left it looking brand new. Something that can be an issue when you have to deal with things around the home. It's not a problem. 954-579-0356, Water Club of Florida, will handle anything that arise, whether it's water or fire damage issues or preventative measures. 954-579-0356. Check them out on their website, wcufl.com, or on the socials at Water Cleanup FL. If you have the schmutz, believe me, they have the guts. NBA offseason's in full swing. The Olympics is... Going on, the Team USA moves on to the knockout round. We talked about that. We talked about Jimmy Butler. Is it his last year with the Miami Heat? What can we expect from Jimmy Butler? What can we expect from the Miami Heat? That summer league championship, how many of those guys will be on the roster? What guys rose to the surface and can actually help the Miami Heat this season? We talked about that with Heavy.com editor and writer and reporter and analyst Sean Devaney joins us at the Diva Show with the Luby here. On the Five Reasons Sports Network. On the Five Reasons. Uh, one of our favorites here uh, joins us uh, to talk a little baskets. A lot of mystifying things happening in the world of basketball. And uh, we welcome to the show uh, from Heavy.com. He's the main man there uh, and uh, been covering the NBA and basketball, uh, it seems like, forever. Uh, Sean Devaney joins us. Uh, Sean, how are you, my friend? Or should we say, uh, uh, you know, uh, it, it's uh, great to have you on the show. But uh, are, are you coming to us from France? I, I was thinking maybe we should offer you a croissant. <laughs> no croissants for me. I'm I'm uh, I'm here stateside. Uh, was able to watch some of the Team USA uh, out in Vegas, but uh, uh, but I did not make the uh, the junket over to uh, the Gay Perry. Okay, uh, and uh, apparently, I mean, this is strange to me. A, a couple of things. I'm sure you're following this action uh, very closely. Uh, who, who put together this uh, this three on three team? <laughs> uh, has Jimmy Fredette been playing professional basketball anywhere of late? And which Barry is that? And, and who are these other two guys that are on the team? <laughs> uh, you know, the, 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 the way that the three on three works, um, it, it's really what, what the Olympic committee wants to do is to make sure that you don't just get uh, a, a couple guys that didn't make the, the five on five roster uh, and, and, and stick them on the three-on-three. Three. Uh, so if you've ever played uh, for USA Basketball in, in, in a major tournament, that's, uh, you know, in the World Cup or in the, in the, uh, uh, in the Olympics, then you can't play uh, on the three-on-three. Three. You know, so that, that, that's okay. one of the main reasons why this is uh, uh, why, why it's a much different team than, uh, uh, than, than what you see on the five-on-five. Five. And, and Jimmer Fredette has never played. Uh, for, for either of those teams, so so he's eligible. Uh, but uh, but most guys a don't want to do it, and then b uh, you know the ones that might be interested have probably already played for Team USA at some point. So is that Rick Barry's grandson? Who who is that? I mean, he shoots <laughs> underhanded free throws, so it's got to be you know part of the family. And uh, yeah, why wouldn't yeah, you? I mean, yeah. Sean, you you probably grew up like we did. I mean, uh, you know, and, and I, I we were just talking to a friend of ours. Uh, uh, before on the show, and, and he was saying he probably played like a hundred thousand three on three games in his lifetime, uh, which uh, that that was the predominant form of basketball that uh, I grew up playing. Um, it was mostly three on three half court basketball. Uh, wouldn't you want to have like one big motherfucker and then uh, a couple of guys that could really shoot? Are, are there yeah, height I mean, requirements uh, on this? I mean, what's the story? Uh, it, it really uh, looks awkward how they assemble this team from a positional standpoint. Yeah, right, right. Because you wind up with 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 three sort of uh, uh, repetitive guys, and 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 not yeah. really uh, 
uh, you know, I'd want Chet Holmgren out there, right? You know, I exactly. want I want a guy seven seven four seven five uh, protect exactly. the rim and, and 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 can drag you out and, and, and shoot a three. Um, and uh, you know, I'd want Kyrie Irving, somebody who can break you down off the dribble. But uh, you know, again, like those guys aren't aren't aren't, aren't readily available. Uh, but yeah, you know, I I, I I really don't know why they they, they construct the team. They, I know they have a camp and they uh, they kind of go through the camp and they pick their players that way. But they treat it like a separate sport. They don't treat it like an offshoot of USA basketball. It, it's like USA three on three is uh, they really do treat it like uh, like a completely separate sport. So the big story, uh, and I do always like bringing it back to the Heat, uh, and I do want to talk uh, summer league and talk uh, NBA off season, but. Uh, we are in the middle of the Olympics, and Team USA has gone off to a, a pretty good start, uh, demolishing Serbia and then sort of avenging that close win versus South Sudan. They didn't cover, but they were up by nearly 20 most of the second half. Um, but the story is always not who did it, but who didn't do it. And the two names we keep hearing more and more, because we're not seeing them, is Joel Embiid and Jason Tatum, look, it's funny. It's what we've seen with the Olympics. As much as we want to have all the stars, and they are star-studded, you do throw in some guys that seem a little, huh, that's weird, with an older Drew Holiday and a Derek White. But again, it's still basketball. You still need to have guys, glue guys, quote-unquote, even if it is an all-star team. Um, what, do you think there's uh, ill will? I mean, again, these, Jason Tatum literally is an all-NBA first team. Joel Embiid is an all-NBA first team. Joel Embiid has been an MVP candidate the last – or MVP f- – winner the last two to three years and they're not even the last two to three games are barely seen the court like do you think that or do these guys just get it do they really just buy into that degree even if they are top 10 top five players in the world well yeah i mean i think when you when you sign up for team usa you've got to understand that that you know you might not fit into the pecking order the way you do with your nba team first of all uh and then you have to understand that it's a different game you know i mean you're going to get matchups uh, where, you know, perhaps Joel Embiid is going to be useful, uh, but there aren't going to be that many because most uh, international teams don't have big guys uh, who you want to uh, to match up against Joel Embiid because, you know, they're, they're going to be outside shooters. They're going to be uh, six foot nine and more athletic, and, and, and he's going to be a little bit lost on the defensive end. Um, you know, offensively, he has not seemed right. Uh, that would be a concern for me if I'm a – uh, a, a Sixers fan, you know, going back to the playoffs, even, uh, you know, he has not seemed right uh, for the last, uh, uh, you know, 20, 25 games that we've seen him on the floor, including these, uh, uh, including these, uh, the, these Olympic games and the showcase games. So, uh, you know, I think there's probably something bigger to worry about with Joel and B. Jason Tatum, you know, that whole thing I thought was a tempest in a teacup. You know, he didn't play. Big deal. They won by 26. He comes out, he starts uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in the second game, but you know, I, I, that's one of those things where um, you know you need something to talk about on ESPN. <laughs> <So we laughs> talk about it and not to you for uh, you know over and over and over. Uh, but but you know the MB thing is a little bit more concerning because because there does seem to be something wrong with Joel Embiid, and that goes back to the season. There uh, had to be uh, taps blowing for bookmakers all around the world yesterday. Getting 30 with <laughs> South Sudan it seemed like a gift after they got within one in a game that uh, you, you thought was going to be a little more than a, a showcase uh, Globe Trotters, Washington Generals type of uh, outcome. So, so they they were pretty impressive. Uh, all right, uh, Sean Devaney with us, uh, Heavy uh, Who's who's winning the off season? Nick fans already have uh, you know their hands around uh, the uh, Larry O'Brien. They think they did it. Uh, other teams, uh, you know, seem to make some advances uh, of significance. We got a lot of players that got a boatload of money. Um, who, in your opinion, is winning the off season so far in, in the NBA? I, I would say it's probably uh, uh, Oklahoma City at this point. You know, I, I, some of the moves that have been made. Um, you know, you can you can find a negative to go with every positive there. We talked about Embiid. Uh, you know, the Sixers get a lot of attention as 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 a team that. Uh, that won the offseason for getting Paul George. But, you know, take a look at Paul George's performances in the playoffs, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. You know, that, that's not going to be decided until May and June. Uh, and, and, and my guess is that, uh, uh, that we'll see the, the, the Paul George who flopped so many times uh, in, uh, with the Clips. You know, that, that, so I, I'm hesitant to call the Sixers a big winner just because they got the biggest guy on the market. 
Um, you know, Mikhail Bridges, uh, a very nice addition. I still wonder what the Knicks will say. What do you do with, with Julius Randle? He does not fit there. Uh, that's going to be a problem. They're going to have to figure that out. Uh, and, and, and they seem to have kicked that can down the road. Uh, so that's, that's a big thing with them. Uh, but I think the Thunder just addressing the needs that they have. They need another big guy. Uh, they go and get Isaiah Hartenstein. They, they definitely overpaid him, uh, no question. Uh, I think it was 80 something million bucks for three years. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite a lot for a guy of his caliber, but, uh, uh, but that's what they had to do to get him out of New York, and they had the money to spend. So, uh, so, so they get him, and of course, I think the, the Alex Caruso trade was, was brilliant. That, that, that fits them perfectly. Uh, so I think, you know, in, in terms of, uh, uh, of, of real advance, I think that the Thunder are the team that, uh, uh, that really got themselves better uh, without any question marks, without any, uh, uh, you know, asterisks like you see with the Sixers or the Knicks uh, and the moves they made. I always do like to put the heat in there, and I know they haven't made any big moves the last, like, three or four years, to be brutally honest, in the off season, and they've fallen back in the pecking order. Um and people are sort of wondering what if they'll do anything. But I do find it interesting. The big move was a move that hasn't happened that people were sort of speculating with will he, won't he, Jimmy Butler be moved? Will he, won't he, Jimmy Butler get an extension? And it seems like both sides have just said, no, we're going to play the contract out and then go from there and either he'll resign or go somewhere else. Uh, to me, it's interesting because I find it as not the worst strategy for the Heat. I know a lot of people think, well, you could lose Jimmy Butler for nothing. I mean, at the end of the country, he'll be like 36. And the body of like a 48-year-old, the way he's played basketball and who he's played basketball for, literally playing for Tom Thibodeau twice in his career, and then going to Mm -hmm. Miami and playing all-out basketball for the Heat as well for the majority of his time here. Um, But the thing with him the last few years has been, as weird as it is for a guy like that, motivation. The last two to three regular seasons, he's really played – the kind of number of games you wouldn't think from a guy that's supposedly Mr. Competition, supposedly the guy that will call out anyone at any time in any open gym. Um, when you look at the heat situation with Jimmy Butler, do you think it's a dud? Or do you, like, we're going to see more of what we've seen from Jimmy Butler and then he still could leave? Or do you think what a lot of people in the heat organization think, you could see a super duper motivated Jimmy Butler, which is exactly what the heat sort of wants? Yeah, I mean, you know, that, that, that's what they're banking on. You know, he played six games last year, of course, Mr. Playoffs and uh, you know when he did play you last year he was he was good but there was definitely something missing in terms of uh, that push in terms of uh, you know his, uh, uh, his 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 desire to win the way the way it compared to where it's been uh, at other points in his career so um, I think at this point at age thirty four coming back he'll be thirty five in September uh, you know he he's really in a in a, in a position where um, if he wants another big contract he's got the player option. Uh, for 52 million bucks. If he thinks somebody's going to pay him, you know, 55 to 60 million bucks a year, he's got a lot to prove because he's not getting younger. Uh, and, uh, and if the injuries persist and, and, and kind of the, uh, the, the slow decline, I won't say he dropped off a cliff or anything, but the, but that slow decline continues, uh, then yeah, that, that, then that's going to be, uh, uh, he's not going to find that money out there. And that's one of the reasons, you know, when you say that they came to an agreement that, that they wouldn't, uh, you know, the fact is that, that Jimmy Butler, if there was a team out there willing to give him 60 million bucks a year and an extension this summer, he would have demanded a trade. He would have been out there doing that. What happened instead is they kind of surveyed the market and said, you know, nobody out there is going to do this right now. Uh, so, uh, you, you know, so let's, uh, uh, let's play this out and, and, uh, uh, and, and see if we can pump up the value. At worst, he opts in. Uh, on that uh, on that final year of his contract at 52 million bucks, he gives himself another chance. So, um, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a big if for Miami, but uh, but no question that that getting Jimmy Butler back and having him play 75 games, having him play at the level we're used to, uh, that this, this season's going nowhere if that doesn't happen. So you said you were in Vegas. So I presume that means you were covering the summer league. Yes, that's right. Okay, so the Heat, and it, it is just Summer League. And again, I've been one of those people that don't put any stock into Summer League. But I will tell you, this is the most Summer League I ever watched in my entire life because that Summer League team, for a Summer League team, was really fun to watch. I mean, they had six or yeah. seven guys that I really feel like will be in the NBA. Not on the Heat necessarily, but I feel like they are NBA players. And a lot of the time you watch Summer League, it's literally like watching one of these offshoot NFL, like professional football leagues. 
that didn't feel like it. There was look, the Grizzlies team was really solid. There was an OKC team, but the Heat ended up winning it, and they really the, the Christopher kid, the Alondis Williams, their first round pick, Ware Johnson, uh, the Isaiah the point guard kid. Uh, look, the the Swider, like these are all guys that feel like they're NBA players. When you looked at that roster again, you were out there. What were you thinking? Because again, I know it's summer league. I'm not saying they're going to change the world when the NBA regular season happens. But it did feel like there was a lot of NBA talent on that roster. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would absolutely agree with that, and 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 that's always interesting to watch with with Miami is how they how they order the back end of their roster because they're one of the few teams that uh, they will play, you know, guy number ten, eleven, twelve. They, they'll play those guys early on in the season. They're supposed to love to do that. Uh, sometimes it's dictated by injuries, but sometimes you know they they want to see what they've got with these guys. Uh, and I think you already saw that a little bit with Drew Smith. Um, you know what, what they're going to do with him. Uh, they, they, they give the, uh, uh, the, 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 the two-way deal to uh, to Josh Christopher. I think that because uh, there was interest in him, and and, and they wanted to, to make sure he has some stability and and, and wants to stay with them. Uh, you know, Cole Swider, I think, is definitely an NBA player, uh, and and they would like to keep him on if they could. Uh, but you know, if he gets another offer, uh, he'll jump at it. But uh, uh, otherwise, you can see him in some fall. Uh, but yeah, you know, I mean, they, they, there's a lot of guys uh, on that team uh, uh, who are are, are definitely uh, uh, NBA worthy uh, for for, for uh, uh, you know, not necessarily for them, but but, but will be uh, for somebody. So. Um, yeah, you know, I, 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 like I said, Josh, Josh Christopher, they, they use their, their two-way guys. So the fact that they put Josh Christopher uh, on there, uh, you know, that indicates to me that they do plan on, on using him. Um, you know, whether the other guys wind up making the team, I don't know. But I, I, I do agree with you that, that, that there will be some two-way players there uh, and there will be some guys who, uh, uh, who get opportunities with other teams. Those call-ups from Sioux Falls have to be doubly euphoric. I mean, imagine you know, you're I mean, not only going to the NBA, teams, but you're leaving Sioux Falls for Miami. Gosh, you know, you know, I mean, most teams have their have their their G League teams. Very, you know, Oklahoma City has this right in Oklahoma City. Chicago has this yeah. right in Oklahoma. I'm sure if you're playing uh, in the Heat organization and you've got to go from Miami to Sioux Falls, you're thinking, why can't can we do this in Fort Lauderdale? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 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 I mean, uh, you may as well send them a copy of the Gulag exactly. Archipelago or something for them to read on the plane getting there. Uh, that is like going to Siberia by uh, NBA yeah. standards, uh, I, I would imagine. Uh, all right. Uh, you can tell that we love you, Sean Demony, for the many years that you've been devoted to uh, Luby's request to have you on the show and, and the great information that you've imparted and, and the good conversations because uh, you were with us here about 15 minutes and we made no mention of Bronnie James. You did. Good so man. we thank you. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, it wasn't like uh, uh, Donnie I, Boy I, I sitting down in front of the uh, National Association of Black uh, Journalists uh, yesterday. Yeah, we, we... Yeah, right, no, right, right. I, yeah. I, I thank you for not asking, <laughs> most important. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sean. Uh, always a pleasure. Best, my friend. friend. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Thank you, guys. Sean Devaney, ladies and gentlemen. Always enjoyed talking to Sean. He's covered the NBA for a long time. He reports. He also breaks news. He also analyzes. And he's an editor and, and an author. In his own right, really enjoy talking to him. He keeps an eye. He's not like our own Ethan Skolnick, but he keeps a decent eye on the Miami Heat. I liked a lot of what he had to say. It was a very talented summer league roster, as we've talked about, a lot of you guys have talked about. Josh Christopher already got a two-way. It feels like Isaiah is going to, if he hasn't, will get a two-way. Um, I know they just signed Pullen yesterday, and he was actually pretty interesting. You drafted uh, Ware in the first round. He looked very interesting. Uh, Larson also was a first-round pick, and Johnson was an undrafted free agent signing before the summer league, so it feels like they're going to fill out the roster. And what he said about Jimmy Butler is something we've all said. I don't know what the future is with Jimmy Butler in the Miami Heat. I still think he stays with Miami in, into the future, but you know what? He wants to prove himself, and the Heat want him to prove himself. The last two, three years, he's either been injured, quote-unquote, or just missed a lot of games in the regular season and the playoffs. As hard as he plays, as tough as he plays in the playoffs before this year where his injury actually took him out of the playoffs, he seemed to be hurt every playoffs. So you know what? Let's see him have a lot to prove. He wants to make... He's already, he, look, he's gonna if he opts in, he's, it's going to be 50-something million. So he's not going to get that much more money. He would get much more years. He's going to be 35 in this season, 36, the beginning of the next contract. And he's a guy that's played really physical basketball for a long time. 
where his body is more like a 40-something year old, like I said to Sean. A motivated Jimmy Butler is what the Heat want to see. A motivated Jimmy Butler is a good thing. And it feels like that's what we're going to see. And that's what Sean talked about. If you want to hear more of what we have to talk about, check us out each and every morning, 8 to 9 on South Florida Live, either the Facebook page or the YouTube channel, South Florida Live. You can check us out our national podcast, the Believe Network, BLEAV.com. Search after hours, a lot of fun, interesting conversations in and outside the world of sports. And our South Florida skewed content right here, the Diva Show with the Luby on the Five Reason Sports Network. Hey, folks, Tony Segreto here. Let me ask you a question. What do you look for when you go out to eat? Good food, obviously. Friendly atmosphere, not too loud, but good energy, reasonable prices, and a place where you feel comfortable. All those ingredients, <laughs> no pun meant there, are hard to find unless you're talking about the Texas Roadhouse. You see, they encompass all of those attributes. Really, really good food, amazing atmosphere, good for a family, good for a date, or just a night out for yourself, and prices that will make you extremely happy. Their ribs unmatched. Steaks hand cut every day. Everything, and I mean everything, is made on site, including their incredible bread. It's the one day, folks, that you can forget about low-carb diets. Trust me when I tell you, Texas Roadhouse, your restaurant, your destination, when you say, where should we go and eat tonight? These days, we're all looking for comfort anywhere we can find it. Thank goodness for Landlubbers, Raw Bar and Grill in the plantation, because they are making sure you are as comfortable as possible. First of all, they're not only open for delivery and pickup. All you have to do is go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both pickup and free delivery. You're going to have the best wings in the world. You're going to have a great burger. You're going to have... They're amazing soups. Again, Landlubbers, Raw Bar, and Grill. It's nice and easy. Just go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both your pickup and free delivery. Thank goodness for Landlubbers for making you always feel right at home. 